Um, hi. Hi, Megan. How are you? I'm so good. Um, me too. Me it's too. I'm always podcasting. happy. Yeah. It's so fun that we get to do this every single week. Yeah. Also, did you see that I shared, was it last week, that it's our one year anniversary of deciding to do this? Yeah, I think our first episode, it was the first Friday in whatever October, October whatever yeah. date that was. Yeah. I, I want to say it was like October 2nd or something, yeah. but it's coming up, guys. Guys, and we celebrate have, us. <laughs> we have some fun things planned in October, we really but we'll do. talk about those on, on the next episode, I think. Yeah. But while we're here, we are recording this on August 25th. Yes. And yesterday they just started digging in <gasps> Bardstown. A, yeah, a property in Bardstown mm-hmm. looking for Crystal Rogers. And you guys know we haven't done an episode on that case, but we've we've talked about it here and yeah. there. Around here in particular in Kentucky, I feel like it's just one that if you're into this sort of thing, you kind of keep an oh, eye yeah. out. Yeah. And I just, I, yesterday when I was looking at it, I got emotional. I was just thinking yeah. like, God, we could finally find her. We, yeah. like I had anything to do right. with it. But you know what I mean? Like her family can finally have that piece well, of mind knowing. her sweet mom. Yeah. Who lost her husband too. Yeah. And then the idea, if the people who are behind it are the ones that everyone widely sus- suspects to be behind <laughs> her disappearance, which P.S. is completely my opinion. Yes. And yeah. only my opinion. Right. Which is what this podcast is yeah, really Yeah, we'll talk about that on. too. <laughs> it's just so nice if they'll fondly yes. get that they won't get away with it. Right. You know, you just hate to yeah. think about people getting away with something like this. But I'm just I'm just so hopeful. And they're they're back day two. The FBI is back today <gasps> the looking same so yeah. It would Which be really doesn't nice. mean that the people that live there did it, but it is No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. I don't think the people that live there are involved at all. Have any idea, yeah. It's more of other uh-huh. people with the, attachments to that to the property. Place. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I don't even know if that's allegedly. I think that part is act. They definitely right. do. I'm not sure. Yeah. But allegedly. It could be that. Gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, yes. which is Magic Murder and Mystery Podcast. Right, guys. I'm Kara. <laughs> I'm Megan. <laughs> but anyway, today is a side piece day. It is. Is it my turn? It, I think. It yes, is. Yes, it is. So I'm doing my side piece on Typhoid Mary because I think I've mentioned her before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all... Shits and giggles until someone giggles and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this story. Man. And, you know, it's not meant to be a political statement or anything. No, but it is. But the Typhoid Mary story is a interesting one to have in your mind right now yeah. for reasons. Yeah. Okay. This what, whole what podcast is our opinion and our opinions are yeah. based on the facts that are publicly available. Is yes. that what we're saying? Yeah, exactly. That's our disclaimer. Okay, let's hear okay. the story. Typhoid Mary's real name was Mary Mullen. Uh, Mary was born in 1869 in Ireland. She immigrated to the U.S. in 1884. She had worked in a bunch of random positions for wealthy families before she decided she was going to be a cook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One article goes on to say that she harbored the extremely contagious bacteria that caused typhoid fever, but she never really demonstrated most of the symptoms. So she was a carrier. She was a carrier. Can you <laughs> can you, can you still carry a virus and not have symptoms? For sure, Megan. Okay, so she <laughs> includes so the symptoms of this include fever, headaches, diarrhea. But she like I said, she was kind of immune to this herself. So she was the first person in the United States that was an asymptomatic carrier mm-hmm. of it. And then this Judith Walzer Levitt wrote a book called Typhoid Mary Captive to the Public's Health. She said she denied ever having been sick with the disease, and it's likely she never knew she had it, suffering only mild, like, flu-like episodes. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't know if you guys, I mean, we're she's going to tell the story. But yeah. if, if you're familiar with the Typhoid Mary thing, like... I understand that back in this time period in particular, yeah. if somebody's telling you, hey, yeah. you are carrying this virus and getting everybody sick, you'd be like, what? No, I, no, I feel I'm not, fine. I feel fine. I mean, I it had a cold two understand. weeks ago. It's hard to understand now yeah. in 2020 with other viruses that yeah. maybe are a thing. I don't know. I don't know. But um, gosh, can you imagine being this woman? Yeah. Just... Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it would feel like a witch hunt. It would yes. feel like... Yeah, exactly. Why are like, you, doing why are you to me? It's like she's you a leper. You just want a scapegoat. She's like, I'm not a leper. Right. Yeah. Um, also, side note, did you know that armadillos can carry leprosy? <laughs> 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 My brain is literally the white pages of everything random. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so in 1906, she was hired as a cook by Charles Henry Warren. He was a wealthy New York banker, and he rented a residence to the Oyster Bay on the north coast of Long Island for the summer. 
So from August 27th to September 3rd, six of the 11 people present in the house started suffering from typhoid fever. And like we, you and I mentioned, it was a very fatal disease. It said 10% of the cases mainly affected were people from large cities, obviously, because it's constantly, you know, you're in close mm-hmm. quarters. <laughs> okay, so there was this civil engineer um, by training who had become kind of an expert in sanitation. His name's George Soper. I've read some articles that say it was George Sober, but I think it's Soper. In 1906, the landlord of this Long Island house was struggling to trace this typhoid outbreak. So he called in George and he, George decided to publish his results, which said he believed that the freshwater clams could be involved in these infections. He said he conducted his interrogation kind of hastily, just asked the sick people and also Mary who had at the time kind of like flu like symptoms Mm -hmm. He was just like, oh, it's got to be the clams then. Like, this is what she made. Like, this is what they ate. Although George had thought it was the clams, he started doing some more digging. And he's like, oh, wait a second. This lady didn't eat the clams. She just prepared them. Oh. He's like, shoot. Yeah. That can't, if she's got typhoid fever too, Mm -hmm. that can't be it. He started stalking Mary. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> yep. He it revealed that she was transmitting the disease by her activity. So listen, he tried to harass her into giving him urine samples, fecal samples, and blood samples. But in turn, she started chasing him out every time he'd come up to her and be like, ma'am, I just need this. He once said she seized a carving fork and advanced in my direction. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, like you're just, think about it. Like you're a cook yeah. in somebody's house and some man is constantly yes. like, I would like I need, some of your poop, please. Can I have, don't make it weird. Just go, <laughs> go pee in this container, yeah. ma'am. I'm going to take it with me. I'm going to take your blood You'd be like, and your poop. Get the hell out of my kitchen. Yeah. I mean, it's just, especially then before people understood uh, any of this. And poor it's Mary. So, it, but even now, when people yes. understand it, it's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go. <laughs> Please have don't sh- make me do that. Yeah, shoved up my nose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> so, George discovered that the cook, Mary, had served in eight families. Seven of these eight families had experienced cases of typhoid fever. So, that made 22 people infected. And some of those people died. He learned that Mary would often serve ice cream with fresh peaches on Sunday. And that compared to her cooked meals was where he found if you're cooking the food, it's going to cook out the mm, typhoid the fever. would kill it. Yes. But where it's peaches and ice cream, which is her specialty on oh, Sundays. No. That's what's giving it to the people. Because she's not washing her hands. Fresh peaches, man. Fresh. Yeah, but back then they didn't know. They didn't know. Yes. I have fecal matter under my fingernails. That's fine. (laughs) I read this article about, it was an outbreak in the 1800s in England of, I can't think of the official name of the disease. Uh You'll all know it, but it's it's diarrhea essentially, but that's not what they called it. And that's how they figured out how important it is to like wash hands and to keep your water supply good and clean. Yeah. And it's like, they just didn't know before. And it's weird to think that you would not know. Like, it's weird to think like, of course you should wash your Right. Hand. But that's because it's so obvious right. to us. And there's still people who don't do it. So She at first tried to tell him that she was born in the U.S. And then he was like, no, you're not. You're an immigrant. So he tracked her job history back years doing what they do today um, as contract tracing. Oh. So he found the eight former employees or employers, seven, like I said, had the outbreaks. So then he starts tracing that back and he said that about 3,000 New Yorkers had been infected by this salmonella type like as a result of Uh her yep wow yeah it said she was the main reason for this outbreak 3,000 and it says immunization against this hadn't been developed until 1911 and antibiotic treatment was not available until 1948 so they claimed that Mary was a dangerous source and had to be restrained. They started accusing her of being the source of mm-hmm. everybody's. Like, then all these people started she's coming down with it. And so, and yes, that. yeah. So she's like, what the heck? So they brought in Dr. Biggs of the New York Department of Health and another Josephine Baker, along with the police. They were sent to bring in Mary for testing. Mm-hmm. So they were like, you're going to give us a sample one way or another. Yeah. Obviously, she was not cooperative. She eluded them for hours, and then she was forced to give samples after that. Her stool sample was positive, and so she was transferred to North Brother Island to the Riverside Hospital, and she was quarantined in a cottage. 
Yeah. But she got a cottage. It's not like a little tiny room. Yeah, but they shut her away. Yeah, they did. It was and horrible. And I mean, what is the right answer? We right. Can talk, we all wait to yeah, yeah. But it really is. Yeah. It's awful. And also... What could they have yeah. done? I don't know. Yeah, because no they didn't answer. know. They had no idea. Sometimes there's no good answer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you may hate the choices being made, but there's also no good answer. No one knows what to do here. Okay. In 1909, she unsuccessfully sued the health department. During her two-year period of confinement, she had... 120 of 163 stool samples test positive. Um, And they never really tried to explain to her the significance of being a carrier. They just offered to remove her gallbladder, which she was like, heck no. Like, how do I know that that's like, what are you all talking about? I mean, it seems like it would all be very, just a whole different world for her. Yeah. So then they started treating her with like laxatives and brewer's yeast and all sorts of like random medicines. So in 1910, a new health commissioner vowed to free Mary and assist her with finding suitable employment but not as a cook so she was released and she agreed she was like fine i won't cook but obviously she was like you know what screw this i enjoy making my peaches and ice cream like people love my cooking and this is the part where i'm frustrated like yes up until here i feel sorry for her because she's unknowingly doing this and she's you know but then it's like after you've been told multiple times then you go back to do yeah. it again. Yeah. But also, I mean, it's all she knew. It was how she'd made her living, you know. Yeah. Well, and she, it was kind of just <sighs> no like a. No good answer. No good answer. And it was kind of like one of those, you screwed me, I'm going to screw you type things. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, my personality type is if someone that I'm not happy with is trying to tell me to do things one way, I'm going to go out of my way to do it the complete opposite just to piss them off. Mm-hmm. Like it's not. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it sounds like that's what she was doing. So it says in a handwritten letter to her lawyer in June, she complained, I've been in fact a peep show for everybody. Even the interns had to come see me and ask about the facts already known to the whole wide world. Yeah. The tuberculosis men would say, there she is, the kidnapped woman, she wrote. Dr. Park has had me illustrated in Chicago. I wonder how the said Dr. William H. Park would like to be insulted and put on the journal and call him or his wife Typhoid William Park. I mean, So she's yeah. just bitter. She, like I said, went back to cooking in New York and New Jersey. She prepared meals for a hotel, a Broadway restaurant, a spa, a boarding house. And in 1915, a typhoid outbreak made 25 people at the Sloan Maternity Hospital sick. So they were like, what the heck is happening? Like, why is this happening all over again? And then they got there and they're like, are you kidding me, typhoid Mary? Yeah. Like, what are you doing in here? Mm. Why are you doing this? Um, And it says within three months, she contaminated at least 25 people of the doctors, nurses, and staff, two of which died. And then she was hired as Mary Brown because they all knew her as Typhoid Mary. So she's like, oh, I'm going to change my name. change my name. Okay, but don't call yourself Mary. No, do better. Yeah, do better, better, Miss Typhoid Mary. Um, (laughs) And she was was the butt of everyone's joke. So it goes on to say, like, she was the butt of the jokes of cartoons. Eventually, Typhoid Mary appeared in medical dictionaries as a disease carrier. Well, obviously she was. Mm -hmm. She was placed back on North Brother Island, where she remained until her death on Christmas morning, 1932. A man who came to deliver something to her found her on the floor of her bungalow paralyzed. She had had a stroke and she was never able to walk again. And then six years after that, she was taken care of in the Riverside Hospital, where she died in November 1938. They hurried to bury her body in a very specific place because they were like, oh, we don't want this to get out any further. And there were some people that say that post-mortem, it revealed that she shed salmonella bacteria from her gallstones. And so then some were like, okay, well... Maybe she should have had that operation. The gallbladder to remove. Yeah. But it said she never lost a sense of persecution in 1909. Like that letter. She said she was just a peep show to everybody. And there she is, a kidnapped woman. So it's just like, what? I don't know. What do you believe? And then it goes on to say North Brother Island is now an inha- uninhabited bird sanctuary these days. Yeah. I mean, especially where they didn't really from what you were saying there, take the time to really explain yeah. everything to her. Yeah. I get why she wouldn't just be like, sure, I'll, I'll well, go. Well, she's like, I'm not take sick. Take my gallbladder. Yeah. Fine. I mean, it's well, all just too hard surgery, to understand. Like yeah. Invasive surgery at that time. And then it seems like it shouldn't be true that this one woman can spread to all those people. Right. Like, why her? Yeah. And of course she has this feeling of persecution. Yeah. Wouldn't you? You'd yeah. be like, why me? And then they want to shut you away and keep, and you'd be yeah. so lonely. And yeah. And you don't feel sick. Right. 
Which maybe, I mean, the stroke or whatever was a part of the typhoid fever and it was just a part of it. Who knows? Yeah. I think it's such a sad story. Yeah. But it's also fascinating in terms of the way a disease can right. spread throughout a community. Yeah. I just hate it. You know, I know. like I hate yeah. it for her. Yeah. Someone I know very closely, they have inactive tuberculosis. So mm-hmm. especially like during this time, I'm always like, hey, do you need to get that checked? Are yeah. your lungs okay? Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing okay right now? And they're like, leave me alone. Just yeah. don't ask about it anymore. I'm fine. And I'm like, oh. But it is. Like, it it's so nervous. weird to yeah. think that you could be sick and not know it. Yeah. Or carrying a virus and uh-huh. not know it. Yes. And infecting other people and not and knowing, not knowing it. it. Strictly talking about typhoid, obviously. Right. Definitely not anything else. Or knowing that you have it and yet not following protocol <sighs> and still going out about your business and spreading it. What? To that your neighbors. That wouldn't happen. <laughs> no. No. Oh, man. Jesus. Yeah. Poor yep. Mary. Poor Mary. It would also be really strange if you were her descendant to look back and be like, yeah, I'm related to typhoid Mary. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it is such a stigma they put on her when that, and yes. calling her typhoid Mary was a really crappy thing. Right. To do. Right. Spreading her feces far Jeez. and wide. Goodness gracious. Wash Everybody your go hand. wash your wash hands. Wash your yeah. hands, guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you right. for yeah. the side piece. You're welcome. We'll be back Friday with another episode. Yep. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.